I have one very simple rule. If you can start your day's adventure from inside the mouth of a dinosaur, always start your day's adventure from inside the mouth of a dinosaur. Look at this, everyone. Recognize where we are? We are inside the mouth of Mr. Rex, one of Claude Bell's world famous Cabazone dinosaurs, the Pee Wee dinosaurs. And what? of you. This makes me really happy. Dinosaurs are a happy place. Sadly, I'm not here today to show you a happy place. I'm here to show you a sad place. But first, we have to climb down this dinosaur. It's so awesome being inside of this thing. The mouth, the eyes, the treacherous, narrow, scary spiral staircase. Look at this. For years, I've heard scientists debating on what the T-Rex actually looked like. Now they found a T-Rex fossil that definitively proves that at least some of them had feathers. But I've never heard scientists describe the inside of a T-Rex. Good thing Claude Bell's famous Cabazone dinosaurs are here to teach us. All right, just a few more sets of stairs and we'll be back outside. Check out this rump window, this dino rump window. That's pretty cool right there. Ooh. It's been a trying couple of weeks, folks. A trying couple of weeks. So it definitely felt refreshing to be up inside of a dinosaur. I don't know if you know this, but actually the original plan for Mr. Rex here was there was a hole in the back of his rump and you could slide down his tail. Never quite worked out. But when you're standing out here, you can still sort of faintly tell where that slide would have been. Look at that, that's so awesome. We were up in there. That just never gets old to me. That's so freaking cool. And look at this, Claude Bell's giant flat turtle thing. Turtle Saurus is like, yo, where's my pizza, bro? Let me know how Master Splinter's doing, buddy. See you later. Anyway, the last couple of weeks have been out of control. Allie is recovering well from her surgery. She still can't really sit for any distinct length of time, but she is starting to be able to walk around and sit for a little while in the car and get out of the house, which is a good thing because although we've been somewhat interrupted in our usual routine for the last week or two, things are about to get a little bit hectic and crazy. All winter long I've actually just been waiting for mid-April to come because April, May, and June are gonna be pretty wild. Behind Claude Bell's original dinosaurs now are these weird dinosaur gardens. It's a lot like Dinosaur World in Florida, only these dinos all tend to look a little more store-bought, a little less homegrown. This one here looks like they took it straight from Steven Spielberg's prop warehouse. Hey, isn't this guy supposed to be a carnivore? What's he doing eating that tree? He's cheating on his diet. One thing's for sure. Even though it's a little less quirky than Dinosaur World, you really can't beat the Cabazon one for density. Look at all these dinosaurs in here. I could be wrong, but it seems like they've added a lot more dinosaurs since the last time I visited. Anyway, as tempting as it is to focus on, and as tempting as it is to show you guys this, and this, and this, surprisingly, that is not why I'm here either. This is why I'm here. Tell them Large Marge sent you. Look at that, Cabazone dinosaurs. They got a cool new logo now, incorporating a little peewee lore. That's awesome. Because I love Peewee's Big Adventure, and these are the dinosaurs from the movie. But these magnificent gargantuan dinosaurs weren't the only thing here in Peewee's Big Adventure. Let's not forget that before Peewee climbs up into the mouth of Mr. Rex with Simone, before he's chased around all over the legs of Diney over there by Andy, he stuck washing dishes in the local diner next door. Because the dinosaurs may have pulled people off the highway, but it was the diner that took their money, and I'm sad to tell you all that Claude Bell's world famous roadside diner, the Wheel Inn, is no more. No, I've come out here a ton of times with you guys. You've seen the building standing, but I'm sad to say that in 2017, this is all that's left. Now this didn't just happen. It happened pretty recently. Actually right after the last visit that I was here, a few videos back, you'll see my little Pee Wee Herman action figure here I brought in front of the wheel in while it was still standing. They demolished it right afterwards, but I did not have the heart to come out here while there were still piles and piles of rubble. I had hoped that somehow, some way, at least the front diner part of the wheel in would be saved, but no, no, no. 
This is all that's left. It's crazy because standing out here now, the footprint of the building looks ridiculously small for the size of the diner and then the offices that were upstairs. Right down here was the front entrance with the two telephone booths on either side that were famously used in that Tears for Fears music video and where Pee Wee entered the diner, passed the old vintage pie cases, turned the corner into the dining room and said, Large Marge sent me. It was the worst accident I ever seen. Then of course he eats a meal and goes, oh no, I lost my wallet. Every time I would set out for tour with my band. I was in a band, we toured the country many, many times. Every single time we would stop here as we were heading east and every single time we sent at least one person in to tell the people at the diner, Large Marge sent me. This is in the end of the 90s, early 2000s, when Pee Wee wasn't cool again yet. So let me tell you, the people in the diner never thought that one was funny. Some of them because they had no idea what we were talking about, and others probably because we were shouting it. My friend Adam the Woo and I did a whole Pee Wee Herman filming locations video. We came here and had a meal at the Wheel Inn right before it closed down forever. But since then, we came back a couple more times. Adam came back a lot of times. We went inside the building when it was abandoned, found the sneaky secret apartment upstairs, wandered around, and I kept looking through the windows into the diner at the old booths and especially the stools where Pee Wee sat at that counter, wishing I could have one. I always thought it'd be so easy to take it, the building's abandoned, it's up for sale, but that would be wrong, right? It's wrong to steal, you can't just steal a stool. But now look what happened to it, that stool is in a landfill somewhere now. Someone did email me to say that they grabbed me the backrest from one of the booths, so there is a piece of the Wheel Inn waiting out there for me in someone's garage, perhaps. But as for the world famous Wheel Inn itself, this is it. This is all that's left. How long is the sign gonna stay here? No one can say. Crazy. This breaks my heart. They couldn't have saved it. Why? Why? You bastards! You blew it up! You blew it all to heck! Darn you! Darn you! Another relic of the golden age of American roadside attractions has bitten the dust. Sad to see it go, honestly. Very, very sad. This right here is why when you see those greasy little mom and pop diners, those old roadside places, you've got to stop in Buy a piece of pie, buy a meal, buy a postcard, a sticker, a t-shirt, anything to keep these businesses afloat. They're important. And this is also why it's important to check out your local historic preservation society or be involved at least for petitions, to sign petitions to save historic buildings. It's a really, really sad day for the lovers of roadside Americana. See, they put this Burger King here and then a Denny's on the other side, which later went out of business and it blocked the view of the diner, gave people more choices. Split up the dinosaurs from the rest of the property so they could sell it to multiple different new owners. Bad decision, gotta keep that property together. The Wheel Inn is gone forever now. Forever, forever. We could only hope that our beloved Cabazon dinosaurs never suffer the same fate. If you live in or are traveling to Southern California, I highly recommend coming out two hours from LA and paying a visit to Claude Bell's wonderful concrete dinosaurs. Buy a sticker, buy a t-shirt, pay the 10 bucks to climb up inside Mr. Rex. It's worth it. You can even pet Mr. Snake. Hey there, buddy. Coochie, 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 coo. Mr. Snake used to hold a light bulb in his mouth. I've seen pictures of people from about 100 different bands sitting there with their legs on either side of this, making a sort of a, a gesture. Probably shouldn't have mentioned that, but it's a, it was an old, you know, road tradition for bands, so there you go. Let me see if I can go up inside Diney here. It was really hard for me to get used to saying that. I always thought it was pronounced Dinny. D-I-N-N-Y. They really gotta change the spelling. Ooh, look up there, it's blocked off now. I used to look all the way up into Diney's neck. All right, got a t-shirt here. Got it. What I preach has been practiced. All right, moving on. Now, Allie's still not back to full strength. And I'm actually not out in this area just to do the video today. It was actually recently sort of a death in the family, death in my aunt's family. So I'm coming out this way to go see my aunt. But I got up really, really early so that I could bring you guys along for some wandering. And you've all been...
waiting so patiently. I feel like you deserve as much wandering as we can possibly pack until one day. So off we go. Farther and farther into the California desert. At the moment, we're headed all the way up to Joshua Tree National Park out in the California desert. Passing through Morongo Valley, then the town of Yucca Valley, all the way out to the town of Joshua Tree. Now I know a lot of you guys live in or near Southern California, and if you've never made the drive out here, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of weird stuff to see along this road. I don't know if it's like living out in the desert that makes people more creative, or if it's just that people are creative everywhere and the desert's just less packed, so you can actually see all the weird creativity, but there's a lot of weird stuff out here in people's yards, along the side of the road, on the businesses, murals. Cool mid-century architecture, it's awesome. Like check this out. I know this wouldn't excite everyone, but look at this just inside the town of Joshua Tree Look at that. It's a giant freaking roadside arrow. I love these things These were really common in the 1950s partly because of the old cowboy and Indian Western movies You know arrow like bow and arrow, but also look look right here Stop right here a little plywood and a 4x4 beam and you can pull customers right off the highway Like I said this wouldn't excite everyone, but this excites me check that out over there a little campfire yard guy selling campfire to people going camping and everywhere out here on the side of the road wildflowers in bloom we got a lot of rain in Southern California this winter so the California deserts are at the tail end of something called a super bloom I gotta tell you it's making the roads out here a lot more colorful than normal as you might be able to tell from the size of the library here in Joshua Tree these towns out here are not very big but what they lack in population they more than make up for in character like look at this place the country kitchen much like the wheel in used to be it's a little roadside restaurant look at the signage it's closed at the moment but I would not mind going in there and at least ordering a soda how cool looking is that all those little hand-painted details hand-painted signage even that green little strip of astroturf now they got a lot of crazy characters out here you got a guy who's created a beauty salon museum there's a crochet museum here in Joshua Tree somewhere lots of crazy characters and little mom and pop shops out here but there's one crazy character in particular that I'd love to meet and he's right here would you look at the size of that tortoise this giant concrete desert tortoise is sort of the unofficial or maybe official mascot of the town of Joshua Tree his name is Myrtle the turtle M-U-R-T-L-E which is why I'm guessing that he's a he but there's no way to tell if he isn't a she also his name is Myrtle the turtle but he's actually a giant Tortoise, which are not the same thing, but you know what Myrtle the turtle sounds good So let's just go with it. Oh look at this right next to Myrtle signs of that spring desert bloom I was telling you about look at all those flowers there even the cacti are about to bloom. Hello there Myrtle I've always wanted to meet you. Ooh, you're hot. That is a very warm tortoise muy caliente Now the desert tortoise is a very rare endangered and protected species in Southern California You are not allowed to touch the real thing if you find it out in the desert. Ooh. I used to think it was because they were so rare and endangered, but now I'm starting to think it's because of the temperature. Anyway, believe it or not, back in the day before these things were so rare and endangered and protected, the urban legend is that Joshua Tree used to host tortoise races and that that's the origin story here behind Myrtle the turtle now as you can see here across the parking lot from old Myrtle there's a mural over here that depicts the modern attitude towards the desert tortoise respect and protect this Myrtle mural has a very good message we don't want these peaceful little fellas disappearing forever so we must respect to protect. We definitely don't want to be doing this to any real desert tortoises. Wah tortoise race, bringing it back. Whoa. Oh, sorry about that there, Myrtle. <laughs> I forgot. Respect to protect. Duh. That is pretty cool right there. Every town needs a mascot like this. Awesome. There's like 50 more weird things in these towns that I'd really like to see, but first I really think we should take a peek into the park. This is why I always have my National Parks Pass handy. Because you never know when you're gonna get a chance to visit one of America's treasures. And Joshua Tree definitely belongs in that category. Look at this place. It's beautiful. Joshua Tree National Park, of course, is named after these. The actual 
Joshua tree. These things are pretty darn funky looking. If you've never seen one before, they can look pretty odd to you. This is an example of a pretty big Joshua tree. In most places, they're pretty short and shrimpy like this guy. My first ever Boy Scout trip, I must have been about 12 years old, we came out to the Mojave Desert and there was a Joshua tree just on the edge of where our campsite was, just on the edge of the firelight. And I was interested in it, you know, so I gave it a little kick with my foot. I'd never do that now. Now I know they're very protected. You can't cut down Joshua trees, etc., etc. But anyway, I gave a particularly husky, hairy looking one just a little gentle kick with my foot and out flew a bat. Well, it was either a bat or some kind of night bird flying out of that tree. It scared the bejesus Lucy out of me. I had not yet learned to respect to protect. Kids, never stick your hand in a strange hole or your foot in a strange tree. Oh, look at this. Look at down here. See those flowers? Look at those dainty, tiny little yellow flowers and those tiny purple flowers. I mean, if you live somewhere where there's a lot of rainfall, this would not impress you. But for the dry, arid California desert, this is quite a sight. We're really just getting just the tiniest little peek at the edge of Joshua Tree today. Because this park is ginormous. I mean, it's so vast. And honestly, just amazing. There's all these crazy rock formations, these huge sweeping vistas. Beautiful desert flower blooms. Josh Joshua trees and yucca plants, strange cactus and unusual spiky flowers. I mean seriously, those are kind of weird looking. Look at that thing. That's no bigger than a dime. Maybe, I don't even think it's as big as a dime. Let me see if it hurts. Oh, oh yeah. That stings a little. Gee, I know. Let me grab a handful of cactus and see if it hurts. I may have traveled far and wide, but clearly I've learned very little. Most of the park is way down that way, and there's sandy parts and flat parts and lumpy parts and rocky parts. Well, like I said, I'm just here for a little taste. And no matter how short, no trip to Joshua Tree is complete without climbing on a few boulders. If you like to climb rocks, Joshua Tree is the national park for you. Seriously, would you look at the size of these gargantuan rocks? Whew. Time for a climb. Now these boulders look pretty smooth. But honestly, when you put your hand down on it, it's like putting your hand down on sandpaper. I slipped just a little bit a second ago and scraped up my hand pretty good. Oh jeez, and I forgot to bring any hand lotion. And now my hands are going to be all rough and callous like Bruce Springsteen's. Wow, look at this. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this guy. oh exercise. It's so fun. All right. Okay. So far, so good. I haven't seen any rattlesnakes yet. So that's always a bonus. Whew. Look at this giant boulder just balancing there. Huh. It took me longer than I thought. But boy, what a view. That is pretty cool. And look at this. There's even some flowers up here in these crazy boulder mountains. Beautiful. I just spent a couple of days in Death Valley camping with my family. And Super Bloom is mostly already over out there. But it was super green, just like this. We saw chuckwallas and bighorn sheep and coyotes, kit fox. Tons of bats. Pretty cool. All right, well, never you fear. We'll be back again someday. But that's it. That's our peak at Joshua Tree. The thing I love about ugh, the desert parks out here. Is that even, whoa, that rock? is moving. Huh. Is that even during the busy season? Even during the nice weather and the crazy crowds that came out to see the super bloom, you can still find the space to be virtually alone. When we were out at Death Valley, every single hotel and campsite in the entire national park, and that park is huge, size of Connecticut, was completely sold out. And there were two or three points of interest where there were somewhat full parking lots. But even still, at its peak season, there were vast portions of the day where you wouldn't see another single living soul. Now compare that to Yosemite or something where even when it's somewhat empty, there's crowds everywhere. And that, my friends, is what I like about the desert. Oh, and by good weather right now, I mean, it's only about 85, 90 degrees. I'm one of those freaks of nature people where I don't burn. Everyone else in my family burns, right? I just get darker and darker. I'm one of those swarthy guys that doesn't burn and even I, got a sunburn in Yosemite. That's why the jacket. And Yosemite, I mean Death Valley. Oh, look at this caterpillar right there. You see that? That's pretty cool. But seriously, I never wear sunscreen. That entire cross-country trip last year, all across the Southwest, coast to coast, I never once 
put on sunscreen that I remember. All those trips I take to Florida, to Disney World. I was wearing SPF zero, no sun protection. And then 24 hours in Death Valley this time, did it to me. Burned all up my arms, all the back of my neck. Kind of a bummer, kind of a bummer. It's weird though, normally I just get darker and darker and darker. And my other family members, my dad, my brother, I mean, they're so pale and white, they glow in the dark. But I, I got all that swarthy Italian jeans, you know, I got all the Italian Sicilian jeans, so I'm the dark one. The dark horse, if you will. I'm a loner, Daddy. A rebel. I was gonna wander a little more on the other side of this mountain, but I walked just over those rocks a second ago, and there were about a billion bees. No frickin' thank you. I do not want to mess with that, because you never can tell with bees. But look at this right here. Look at these sacks of aphids, spider babies. What do you think these little black specks in these giant things? There must be caterpillars, right? Must be caterpillars or something and caterpillar poops, because I think I can see some sort of caterpillar in there, and there are about a billion butterflies here. That's some weird nature, and then over here I can see a little lizard. Look at him holding still on his rock, getting a suntan. Hey, buddy! He's not bothered by me, so I'm not gonna be bothered by him. But seriously, lizards, butterflies, bees, of course, tons and tons of flowers out here. Pretty amazing. If you come at the right time of year, there's a lot of life in the desert. See right up here, right under that boulder. I don't know if you can see him or hear him, but right in that darkness is a beehive. And there's about a billion bees all around us. Okay, I think that's close enough. Slowly, slowly. All right, that's it. Got a couple more things to see and then it's off to my aunt's house. So we gotta head back into Joshua Tree, not the Plants. But back to the town. What a beautiful place. It was definitely worth the detour. Okay, as much as I love seeing the natural desert scenery, I am also a fan of the quirky and very unnatural desert scenery we are about to peruse. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you, if you dare, to venture off the paved road and feast your beautiful beady eyes on this. My friends, welcome one and all to Noah Purifoy's Outdoor Desert Art. Grab a seat because this looks awesome. I believe that the creator of all of this, a man by the name of Noah Purifoy, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, died in 2004 in his 80s. And all leading up to that moment, he had been out here in the desert just north of Joshua Tree creating all of this insane art. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is just one structure on, I don't know how many acres, but a big property. I knew it was big out there, but I didn't know how big and how detailed all of this stuff would be. At least in this case, they're calling this form of art assemblage Sculpture? It's hard to say. Assemblage sculpture. A fitting name indeed. Because there are some crazy looking things out here and I'm not sure just plain old sculpture could describe this. I've seen pictures of some of these before of course, but I didn't know that inside of all of these little structures were all kinds of crazy sculptures. Look at all this junk piled up on this glass and look at this rock dangling precariously above it, tied with some wire to these very flimsy, cracking looking wooden beams. Eventually the desert's gonna do its work and this rock is gonna come crashing through that glass. And the wild part is, there might not be anyone around to see or hear it. Dude, look at this. What do you even call this? It's gated off, but there's this crazy looking chasm down here and look at that creepy, almost bassinet looking thing. And then up here, the world's most dangerous bridge. What even is this place? You guys, I think I'm in love. And look at this out of control, giant shopping cart. It's gargantuan. You could buy everything in the whole world with this. I don't even know what in the world to do with this or this. All I know is that toilet art is the best art and the finest art of all of the art. Look at this property. It goes on forever and 
forever and ever. And some of this stuff really, really rocks. Look at this unicycle right here, balancing precariously on this fence. Here's a ladder to the world's most painful jungle gym. Weird totem pole. Crazy acrobatic chairs. A giant version of one of those thingies that you buy for your boss and put on his desk and the little things hit the other things. I can't even wrap my mind around some of this stuff. Look at that dove up there, just hanging out. I guess this is his piece of art. I like this one. Has a very Tomorrowland quality about it. Look at all those bowling balls in the center. Look at this stuff. This is amazing. I'm really trying not to engage in any toilet humor out here. There are a lot of crazy, wild, creative people that create stuff like this all the time, but typically when they die, these places are usually bulldozed and forgotten really quickly. I mean, you could see how someone could come out here and see this all as just a pile of junk. But thank God, much like Salvation Mountain out by the Salton Sea, this artistic desert treasure is being preserved. In the case of Salvation Mountain, I had the privilege to meet and talk with its creator, Leonard Knight, quite a few times. Actually, I shouldn't say quite a few, a few times for a long time each time. And there's something very special about the type of person who spends their life creating things for other people to enjoy. All right, hey, looking sharp. You know, before I got here, I thought that once I saw this, I'd get really hyper and start just running around like crazy like I do sometimes, but I'm actually kind of dumbfounded. I'm rendered a little speechless out here. I don't know, something about this place kind of fills me with awe, like awe. Look at Mickey. Side note, I just want to say really quickly, sometimes when I come to these places, I run around, I make a lot of jokes, but I don't ever want you guys to think that I'm running around mocking things like this. I genuinely admire and respect the people who create things like this. I genuinely enjoy coming to these places and exploring them. Some people come and see artwork like this and they're very reserved, very hoity-toity, they're very cultured about it, they take it very seriously and they sort of grim. I'm just a different type of person, you know? I like to have fun with it a different way. It's not the way I enjoy things. But I never want you to think that just because I'm running around, sometimes making a few jokes here and there, that that comes from a lack of respect. Wow, look at all these lunch trays from old school cafeterias. That is so cool. Every once in a while I get someone who doesn't understand me or my personality and they'll leave some negative comment. How dare you go out and mock this thing or that thing or this place. Not everyone's gonna understand you, but I would never mock this. I would have fun with it. But how could you put this down? This is amazing. This is the coolest Quonset hut door I've ever seen. Look at this, man. I love this stuff. You know, what makes Noah Purifoy building this stuff out here any different from Walter Knott building his own ghost town. Some art purist would probably say profit, you know, Walter Knott charged admission for his stuff and this guy created this stuff out here to make a statement or for other people to enjoy or for himself. But honestly, I see very little difference between say, Walter Knott, Building Knott's Berry Farm, even Disneyland. This guy did this himself out of his own creativity, his own imagination, his own physical labor. So I mean, there is a difference. I guess I just mean in the sense that all creativity can be enjoyed, you know? There are many different ways to tell a story or to share a feeling or what's in your imagination or I don't know what I'm talking about, never mind. This stuff is so cool. It's so weird. I went to and filmed another place sort of like this called East Jesus. A bunch of different artists have come together and created outdoor sculpture like this. Or pardon me, assemblage sculpture. But as far as I know, I'm pretty sure this place was all created by just the one guy. Pretty incredible what just one person can build and create. And I mean, Noah Purifoy died 13 years ago. And even though some of these pieces are starting to show wear and tear from the crazy climate out here in the desert, I'm actually amazed and impressed with the amount of this stuff that's still standing. Look at this here. I don't know if this is his interpretation of a Hogan or if that's just a superficial resemblance. Almost looks a little bit like a mine. The signs on the floor of the doorway say kids world on them and there's a lot of nails sticking up out of that bad boy. But no matter how shaky the structure looks, I gotta check this out, Doc. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Look at this. The way the light comes in here is making this a little difficult to capture on camera. But this is one impressive, strange, weird, structure. A lot of the sculptures and things in this place make me think that there was a purpose and a meaning behind a lot of the artwork out here, not just piles of junk. And with this one here, we've got this old bed, the TV, and over here, back in this area, the bathroom area 
of this hut. I don't know what to call it. And the one centerpiece of it all is this television here, the American flag. And otherwise, this person is completely surrounded by trash. I don't think that's a coincidence. There may be a message here. Or maybe not. You never know. Very interesting how there's a water heater, bathroom, bedroom area, TV. Here's a little laundry strung up that you have to walk through. And all this trash here. I'm not a political person, nor am I an art critic. So I will not give you any kind of interpretation there. But that building here, that is very thought-provoking. Got a similar theme going out here. The bathroom area over here, and then inside the living room. Old stove right there. Pile of magazines and maybe some newspapers. Very, very interesting. I notice a lot of the sculptures out here have feet with shoes on them. I don't know how many shoes you've seen out in the desert, but I always notice that if you leave a pair of boots or shoes out in the desert long enough, the toes always curl up like that, like the Wicked Witch. Pretty stinking amazing. Parts of it are like something out of a Mad Max movie. Some of it clearly very symbolic, very strange, like this faux cemetery here with the pulpit in the corner. Very weird. Definitely an unusual place. Wasn't expecting it to fill me with so much awe and sort of reverence. This is one of what I like to call those places where you come for five minutes and stay for a week. Really hard to tear myself away from this place. Ooh, look at that. Bicycle. Bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it right up there. <coughs> I think I've got the black lung pop. The other pretty cool thing out here, other than the artwork, is all of the desert plant life. There's like a lot of different varieties of cacti and Joshua trees and stuff out here. Look at this. There's some flowers on this bad boy. Every rose has its thorn, but this here rose has way too, ow oh, shoot many thorns. Oh dang, that is not like a rose bush, man. Those things will go right in the skin. I'm not gonna lie to you. That one made me bleed a little. Oh, bird. There's just so much stuff to see out here. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be walking on this right here, but I feel like that's partially the point. This place is amazing. It's completely bizarre, completely strange. It makes no sense at all. And yet it makes perfect sense. I've never seen a choo-choo train like this before. But now that I've seen it, I'm pretty sure that there should be one everywhere. How cool is this? I love stuff like this, like the little details. That's a grinder on there and this old engine and it just looks like it could actually work. Vintage vacuum cleaners and beer kegs. Someday, somehow, I'm gonna get myself some land and I'm gonna make something. You'll see. Then again, maybe I'll never get the chance. But I have to tell you, coming to places like this, for me, it's very inspiring. Very inspiring indeed. What do you guys think? What do you think of this? Definitely not what you expect to find in the old west. All right, guys. I think I'm going to get some gas from this strange service station. Follow the old tire road and head on back home down the old dusty trail. Thank you all for coming with me as we explored a little bit of the Old West. This particular part of the Old West. This particular part of which has definitely befuddled and bamboozled my brain. I feel quite discombobulated. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Go to justinscarred.com for all the links to hats, t-shirts, pins, etc. And then if you've done those things, you've done your duty. And if you've done your duty, you can go home and sleep well. <laughs>
pamphlets inside it about Noah Purifoy. Turns out he was a super interesting, super well-educated artist and the first director of the Watts Towers Art Center. It also turns out there's a website you can go to to contribute to Noah's foundation and to the continued survival of his artwork out here in the desert. Just go out to noahpurifoy.com and again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh boy. And now there's nothing left but the peaceful and leisurely drive home. Oh my gosh! Oh no, 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 no! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> why? Oh, why? <laughs> what happened to baby? What happened to baby? <laughs> Who could have done this? What? kind of evil lurks among us.